Hi, Boan. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings. Welcome. Exploring trade and investment opportunities, strengthening business ties between Sarawak and Sri Lanka. That's a hefty theme, but that's a very special webinar. And this event is jointly organized by the Sarawak Business Federation and the Ministry of International Trade, Industry and Investment, Sarawak, and also the International Chamber of Commerce, Sri Lanka. Now we have an international audience and our participants are here, there and everywhere we reckon. And ultimately we expect to have around 120 people who will be part of this special event. So trade, investment, opportunities for investment, joint ventures, export facilitation and services are all areas that will benefit from the focus that is being afforded today by way of this webinar. And we trust that all participating in this free webinar will actually accrue some benefit for themselves, the industries, as well as the businesses that they represent. Now, I might mention that we have the support of the Daily Financial Times of Sri Lanka, who are also partners with the organizers. And also we have the partnership and support of the Colombo Port City Economic Commission, the Malaysian Investment Development Authority and the Sarawak Housing and Real Estate Development Association. And we have a sponsor in Zamgems of Sri Lanka. Now, several speakers will deal with their special areas of expertise and their interest. And later on, we shall engage with several panelists who will no doubt offer some commentary on their areas of focus and hopefully set the stage for further action and formulation and implementation of policy and establishing the appropriate infrastructure in the time ahead. And such action would be of benefit for the many sides in this vibrant Asian combine. We have Sarawak, obviously, Malaysia, certainly, Sri Lanka, and dare I say, will also include Indonesia, Singapore, and other neighbor nations too. Yes, and Brunei is also a neighbor. So as was shown and seen in an earlier short audio visual presentation before we began, modern day Sarawak, which has been federated into Malaysia since the year 1963, is all set to bloom and prosper into the future. And interestingly, the year 2030 has been earmarked for when the programs and policy now being formulated will see fruition with an amazing increase in the household income of its people. The population has been small, but the resources in that area are many and have been traditionally famous for its range of exports, including oil and gas, timber and palm oil to name but a few. In the modern day, Sarawak is a modern place with a burgeoning economy, which is set to grow at a very rapid pace. And Sarawak, which is located pretty strategically, is alongside Malaysia, Indonesia, and is located in Borneo Island. And as I've mentioned, Brunei is also a neighbor, as is Singapore. And one can only appreciate the advantage. All of that will provide for the prospective businessmen. And Sarawak is famed for its astonishing national parks and biodiversity for those that would like to consider that aspect of things as well. And it is a huge place, the largest among the 13 states with an area almost equal to that of the peninsula Malaysia area. Now there's more that you can hear from our several speakers. So I shall pause here. Clearly, there is a solid rationale that has been established and that can be optimized on by the ICC, Sri Lanka, 
who is hosting this webinar today. And we have the incumbent chairman of ICC Sri Lanka, Anthony Shanil Fernando, who will begin with some words of welcome by addressing this webinar. He, uh, in addition to being the chairman of ICC, is a solicitor and attorney at law and his partner at uh, Anton Fernando Associates uh, law firm here in Sri Lanka. And of course, he is vitally involved in very numerous areas of uh, business interests in this country. And uh, that itself explains why he is part and parcel of the uh, International Chamber of Commerce. So he's got freight forwarding and other business areas that are very much under his belt, but I shall uh, perhaps in the interest of time, move straight on to inviting Chanel Fernando to address this audience. So here's Chanel. Uh, thank you, Arun. Welcome to the Trade and Investment Webinar, jointly organized by the Sarawak Business Federation and ICC Sri Lanka. I'd like to make a few opening remarks before the speakers start. On the request of ICC in 2022, it was His Excellency YC Tan, then Malaysian ambassador in Sri Lanka, who initiated through MIDA office in China, Chennai, to cooperate with the Sarawak Business Federation. I have visited Sarawak in June last year and May, March this year and have seen the potentials of Sarawak as the springboard to the ASEAN region for Sri Lankan exports. There is an opportunity for Sri Lankans to explore job opportunities after the signing of the government to government agreement for Sri Lankans to work in Sarawak and other states of Malaysia. The Indian and the Bangladesh governments have already signed this agreement. Sarawak can be a stepping stone to Indonesia, which is moving their capital from Jakarta to a new capital city being built in Nusantara on the same Borneo island adjoining Sarawak. Opening the doors for a market of 274 million people, which is going to be the next emerging economy in Asia. The opportunity for Sri Lankan plantation companies and for downstreaming products, especially in the tea coconut industries, the Sri Lankan in industry is consuming high electricity, can go for joint ventures with Sarawak companies, as Sarawak export electricity, petroleum, gas, and electricity is the cheapest in the region and has a deep water port as well as in the industrial area. There is also opportunity for Sri Lankan professionals, industry professionals, to train some of the industries in the manufacturing sector in Sarawak. We also request Sarawakians to look at the training opportunities with Sri Lanka and cross investment into the new Port City Financial Center report concept. I would also like to recognize the support extended by the following. Dato Sri Abang Haji Abdul Karim to Dato Abang Haji Open, the president of SPF, who is also the brother of the Premier of Sarawak. Dato Dr. Philip King, Deputy President of SPF. Dato Jonathan Chai, Secretary General of SPF. Ms. Angie Kue Ling Ping, Deputy Secretary General of SPF. Mr. Peter Chai, Council Member of SPF and Chairman of Sarawak Manufacturers Association, who also has business interest in Sri Lanka and is planning to bring a, a business delegation to Colombo. Mr. Stephen Nang, the Secretary of the Sarawak Manufacturers Association. Dato Dominic Su, who is a developer, and I have seen his mixed development projects and shopping malls in Sarawak. I had the privilege of meeting all of them in Sarawak. I would also like to recognize His Excellency Badly Hisham Adam, High Commissioner of Malaysia and Sri Lanka for accepting the ICC invitation and for nominating his Deputy High Commissioner, Mr. Anrin, to be in the panel. ICC also would like to recognize His Excellency, the retired Air Chief Marshal, 
Suman Galadaya, Sri Lankan High Commissioner in Malaysia for accepting our invitation. I would also like to re recognize Datu Wan Ali Yubi, former finance ministry secretary of the finance minister of Sarawak, whom I met in June last year and this year March, and for introducing buyers for Sri Lankan products and joint ventures through his contacts. Datu Wan Ali and Datu Dr. Philip Ting are both council members at the Swinburne University. Datu Wan Ali arranged a visit to the uh, to view the Swinburne campus facility in Sarawak. The 20 over Swinburne campus in Sarawak offers degrees at one third the cost of doing the same degree in Australia. I was, I was very impressed on the facilities available at the Swinburne campus in Sarawak. The SPF team that coordinate with Ms. Ho of Mitran, Maida, Matred to participate in this webinar to make it a success. ICC globally has offices in 130 countries with 45 million members around the world. And ICC Sri Lanka requests all Sri Lankans to make use of this opportunity provided by ICC Sri Lanka to promote trade and investment between the two states. A request has been made by some of the members of ICC to visit Sarawak to explore business opportunities. Please register your interest with ICC Sri Lanka office. I take this opportunity to thank all the speakers, panelists for participating, the SBF team, and our team, Mr. Hema Kumara, Nilan, Ushani, Ruan, and the ICC Secretary team for organizing the webinar. A recorded version of the webinar will be available in the ICC Sri Lanka Facebook and LinkedIn pages. I believe some of the 126 uh, registration registered people have not received the the link, the Zoom link, uh, I think they are working on that technical reasons to see why it has not gone. So people can view it on the Facebook uh, in a little while because they will be hosting on it as soon as this is over. Please send your questions by email to the ICC email forwarded to the relevant speakers and panelists, which will be taken up. The speakers will uh, actually answer the, uh, if it is a lengthy answer later on, but the panelists, if it uh, will uh, answer some of the short uh, answers, if they can give. So over to uh, you, uh, Ruan, for the uh, for the next speaker. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. So thanks, uh, Shanir, for that introduction and helping us to appreciate the range and scope of this webinar. In fact. It is something that is worthwhile for people to be engaged with. And we hope that that technical flaw will shortly be sorted out and many more will in fact be able to participate. Now, we have a view and a perspective from the Ministry of International Trade and Industry. That's known by the acronym MINTRED. And it's an overview of Sarabak's trade and investment opportunities. And uh, we have as speaker, Mr. Zulkarnain Masron, who unfortunately is unavailable in office on this occasion today, but however, has uh, exerted himself to present to us and for us a presentation on uh, a recorded uh, presentation, which we will be happy to play. And uh, this is from the perspective of industrial terminal and entrepreneur development Sarawak. So we have the permanent secretary of Mintred now, as was mentioned, Mr. Masron. Thank you to the organizer for giving us this uh, golden opportunity to share with everybody on business and investment opportunities in Sarawak. In booming ASEAN market comprising 4.5 billion people or about 60% of the world population, total population. And Sarawak can serve as the gateway for potential investors to penetrate this use and booming market for your product and services. Sarawak is the biggest state in Malaysia 
and been the biggest sawa is rich with biodiversity and natural resources that can be used and turned into commercial products like medicine, cosmetic, food, beverages, and etc. Here we believe that with the advancement of technology and R&D that we have today, you probably can do R&D for the purpose of commercialization of certain species of our biodiversity that we have in Sarawak. Sarawak also blessed with natural resources that can be turned into renewable energy, like hydropower that supply enough electricity and clean water for the use of industry. Sarawak has potential to produce about 11,000 megawatt renewable energy to power the industrialization in Sarawak. Sarawak also has the, has the huge reserve of oil and gas. Sarawak holds about 39% of crude oil reserve in Malaysia and the biggest natural gas reserve in Malaysia. So, the huge potential in oil and gas industry in Sarawak. Ladies and gentlemen, Sawa population of 2.8 million are relatively small and young. These young population are skilled, talented, and trainable workforce, and crucial for industrial development in Sawa. The Sawa government has invested heavily in the institution of higher learning and technical colleges in order to train and produce more skilled workforce for the industry. In terms of economy, Sarawak is broadly a community-based and export-oriented economy. And we are proud to say that Sarawak is one of the largest contributors to the to Malaysia economy. And that contribution largely from oil and gas sector. In this respect, we want to diversify our economy and one of the sector that can leapfrog the development of Sarawak is the downstream manufacturing activities that apply modern technology. Ladies and gentlemen, despite the slowing down of the economy, we are proud to inform that Sarawak continues to enjoy positive trade balance. Sarawak major trade partners are Japan, China, Korea, India, Australia. Sarawak total trade value increased from 43.9% from 150.9 billion ringgit in 2021 to RM. 217.1 billion in 2022. Malaysia is one of the partners in Regional Comprehensive Economy Partnership, RCEP, which consists of 10 ASEAN countries and 5 ASEAN FTA partners countries, which is China, Japan, South Korea, Australia, and New Zealand. This platform covers the proportion of 2.2 billion with total GDP of USD 25.8 trillion or 29.4% from the world GDP. This platform of RCEP provides huge market for both Malaysia for, 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 for investors to penetrate in. Ladies and gentlemen, Sawa inspired to be a developed state or region by 2030. This can be achieved by targeting annual GDP growth of 6 to 8 percent annually. And this and to achieve this noble aspiration, South Government will focus in certain economic sectors such as commercial agriculture, manufacturing and entrepreneurship, mining, forestry, tourism and services sector. This, this sector will be supported by five key enablers. Number one, data center and innovation. Number two, infrastructure. Number three, education and human development. Number four, renewable energy. And number five, excellent services. So these are among the sector and services where investors can invest in Sarawak. Ladies and gentlemen, administratively, Sarawak has 11 administrative divisions. And each division have their particular industry based on the ability of resources in each division. For example, oil and gas related industry mostly located in Miri and Bituli division, shipbuilding and ship repair in Cebu, while high-tech industry mostly located in Kuching and Samara. About almost 36,000 acres of land has been developed 
as an industrial estate in Sarawak by the government. And, and the industrial estate are not only located in major town, but also in small town all over in Sarawak. This does not include industrial areas developed by private sector. We are proud to share with you on our two most successful industrial park in Sarawak. Number one, Samalaju Industrial Park in Mitunu, the house multinational company from Japan, South Korea, Singapore, China, Africa, involved in energy intensive industry to total investment about 28.43 billion. Among the products produced in Samalaju are para alloy, para silicon, silicon manganese, high carbon, para manganese, chemical, aluminium, and etc. And another one is Samajaya High Tech Park in Kuching, where high tech and urban material produced for export purposes. It is home to high tech companies such as Longji from China, Western Digital from USA, Expert from German, Ayuden from Japan, and Region from South Korea. Ladies and gentlemen, with increasing interest to site project in Sarawak, the government will continue to upgrade the infrastructure facilities so as to create more conducive and vibrant environment for business to grow and prosper. The government has spent billion ringgit to build and upgrade infrastructure such as industrial park, road, water treatment plant, substation, port facilities, telecommunication tower, and etc. And we continue to invest more on infrastructure and amenities to ensure that our industrial facilities can meet going the, the growing demand and need from the investor. Ladies and gentlemen, despite global uncertainty of global economy, for the past two years, we are pleased to inform that Sarawak remains as one of the most strategic investment decisions in Malaysia. For 2020 and 2021, Sarawak managed to attract a total investment in management project worth about 23.17 billion. To attract and facilitate investment in Sarawak, both federal and state government has offered attractive incentives for investors. For federal government, the incentive mostly in terms of tax, such as finance taxes, investment tax allowance, reinvestment allowance, incentive for high tech investment, and various other other tax allowances. Besides the tax incentive provided by the uh, federal government, Sarawak government also provide non physical non financial incentive to investor. Among the incentive are. Number one, competitive land price or land payment with flexible term of payment, competitive electric electricity tariff. For energy intensive long term consumer, they can opt for power purchase agreement or PPA and competitive water tariff. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome investment to South. But in the same time, we are very selective in choosing the right investment coming to Sarawak. We welcome investment, investment in certain industries that are number one, high tech in nature and applying advanced technology and modern machinery. Number two, employing skilled workforce and willing to transfer technology to local. And number three, sustainable, green, and environmentally friendly technologies. In the same time, we also want to stretch that Sarawak ban the importation of waste, but we encourage investment in industry that utilize local waste and turn it into commercial product. With that, ladies and gentlemen, Sarawak welcome investment. Thank you. I'm sure we are most grateful for that overview that was provided us. It was quite an impressive one. And uh, with regard to the invitation extended, uh, the incentives are many and the opportunities are several, as was clearly pointed out. We did mention that that was a pre-recorded presentation by Mr. Masron, uh, who represents MinTrade, that's the Ministry of International Trade and Industry and his particular area. Uh, has been as a permanent secretary of Mintred and industrial terminal and entrepreneur development of Sarawak. Our next speaker 
of course, is with us and is part of our webinar and in this meeting. And export facilitation and services is his subject. And he's the director of the Malaysia External Trade Development Corporation, which is known by the acronym MATRADE Sarawak. So here's Mr. Zamzuri Muhammad. Thank you, Mr. Arun. Uh, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, let me share my slides. Um, thank you very much, uh, ICC Sri Lanka, uh, Sarawak Business Federation, for inviting um, Matra Sarawak to be part of this webinar. Um, I was tasked and requested by Mintre to present on the uh, performance and also as procedures and requirements. Well, if you, for those who are uh, wish to import uh, products from Sarawak, and before diving into the ship performance and as procedures and other matters, that uh, please allow me to introduce uh, my agency. I'm from Matred. Uh, we are the National Trade Promotion Agencies with the full name of Malaysia Astronaut Trade Development Corporation uh, with the mission to promote Malaysia's enterprise to, world, to the world. And our vision is to uh, position Malaysia as a globally competitive trade nation. We have uh, four uh, core functions. Uh, which are, we, we do export promotions. Uh, we assist Malaysian companies to promote their products and services overseas. Uh, through our 46 offices overseas, we have 34 trade officers and 12 marketing officers. Uh, those events are like uh, trade fairs, and uh, export acceleration missions, and also trade missions which are led by our, usually by our YB ministers. And we, we also do exporters development. We do export uh, training. We do handholding program for Malaysian companies, especially for small, medium enterprises. And uh, this year we have two plan and 270 events for, for SMEs, for Malaysian and SMEs, including Sarawakan uh, SMEs. We, do, we also provide trade and market information to Malaysian companies that are registered with Matri. The registration is free. And we provide, we provide them with um, uh, a lot of information, such as reports, uh, trade reports, uh, statistics information, also market intelligence uh, through our deliverables. And then we also provide trade advisory services to all Malaysian companies. Uh, and with the sole purpose of one of the purposes, our purpose is to uh, link Malaysian companies or Malaysian exporters with the potential buyers from overseas through our 46 offices that I have said earlier. And then we have uh, also six regional offices in Malaysia. And for those who are uh, willing to source uh, products and services from Malaysia, and you are welcome to. Uh, contact our office offices. With uh, Sri Lanka, is under the purview of our office in Chennai, and I will share the contact with them. The trip performance, yeah? This is a, the trip performance of uh, Malaysia with uh, the Republic of Sri Lanka. Uh, it was uh, quite up and, and down with the highest uh, recorded the total trade was in 2019 before the pandemic, and then it uh, sh shrank to 679 million US dollar in 2020, and uh, now it's uh, going upwards with uh, last year's total export, Malaysia's total export, Sri Lanka registered at 778.8 million US dollar. And the total trade for last year was $854 million. And then this is Sarawak's trade performance with the Republic of Sri Lanka. 
uh, as you can see, uh, the graph is not that pretty. However, uh, it's going upwards trend uh, in, in from 2020 until last year, which uh, have recorded the highest total trade of 24.6 uh, million US dollar. Of course, we've compared to the total Sarawak, uh, Sarawak total export uh, to, to the rest of the world. Uh, Sri Lanka represents only 3% of uh, Sarawak's total trade. However, uh, we believe that there are a lot of uh, opportunities, a lot of improvement that can be done. And then I think uh, moving forward, uh, there will be a lot more increase in both uh, uh, lo both countries' three statistics. And this is Malaysia's major, major products exported to Sri Lanka and also major pro products that uh, Malaysia import from Sri Lanka. Major products exported was, as, as you can see, the petroleum products, chemical, pump oil based, electrical, electronic, rubber based opera, and other, other manufacturers. And then, uh, major products imported by Malaysian companies from Sri Lanka is uh, textile, apparels for wear, processed food, particular and um, food products, and the rest. Uh, this is Sarawak's major products exported into Sri Lanka and also imported from Sri Lanka. And the largest uh, with the 70% share of export is the chemical and chemical products. And 27% share is palm oil, palm oil based agriculture products. This is uh, the data for 2022. And the products imported, the, the value is almost negligible, but I believe uh, there will be a lot more discussion that, that can be done and a lot of, lot more Promotions that can be done for both for both uh, Sarawak and also Sri Lanka. And this is some of the export requirements for some of the products. For those who are wishes or looking to source for processed food and also beverages and also other uh, agriculture products from from Sarawak, these are the certificates or permits that need to be acquired from these uh, relevant authorities. For example, if you are importing uh, processed foods and beverages from Sarawak, you need to have the health certificate, certificate of free sales for some countries and also for non-genetically non modified food content. This, is, uh, this will be based on the requirement uh, imposed by Sri Lankan authority. So the relevant authority in or agency in Malaysia is the Food Safety and Quality Division uh, Ministry, Ministry of Health. <clears throat> and also for those who are wishes to export to uh, Malaysia or, uh, and also Sarawak, then the same relevant authority, the Food Safety and Quality Division, you have to register your products and your uh, companies with the Food and Safety Quality Division State Department of Health. And for ag agriculture produce, uh, for fruits, you need to have the export permit market access. For market access, you have to check whether uh, there are the negotiated market access between the uh, Department of Agriculture, uh, Malaysia or Sarawak, and also the Department of Agriculture in, in Sri Lanka or your, your importing country. So the same goes for animal products vegetable products and also seafood products. In Sarawak, there, have, there are a lot of uh, other products uh, that, that, that or services that uh, offered by the Sarawakan companies. As mentioned by Encik Zul Kifri, Zul Kanai Masroom. In some areas of Sarawak, like Cebu, the, the produce or the manufacturer they manufacture boats and also ships. So those who are interested 
to source for those products, you can always contact us. You can always contact Mate. Um, and any product that you want to source, you can also, you can always contact us. Uh, should you have any inquiries for other products also as services produced by Malaysia or Sarawak, uh, we are always uh, here to, to assist you. And I would like also to uh, share with you uh, the Malaysia International, International Halal Showcase. Uh, we call it the largest halal international trade fairs. This is the, uh, our, this year will be our 19th uh, edition of the fair. And it will be held from 12th until 15th September in my tech, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, this is for halal products and halal services. For those who are willing to participate or to know more about this, this fair, please do not hesitate to, to contact us a letter. And we are also uh, concurrently with this event organized an INS, INSP, which is a business matching. And we match foreign buyers with Malaysian companies that produce the digital product and, which all, and also offer the services which are halal. This is the contact details for Mr. Wan Ahmad Tamiziwa Andres. He is our trade commissioner in Chennai. Uh, he is also looking after Sri Lanka uh, region, Sri Lanka country, and also Sri Lanka, Maldives, and several other countries around the area. You can always contact him. Uh, if you want to know more about Malaysia or about Malaysia's products and services, how to go about sourcing or importing from Malaysia, or you can also, you can also contact us at Madrid Sarawak. This is uh, my contact. You can contact us anytime through emails. You can call us. Uh, <clears throat> we are always ready to assist you. I think thank you so for now. Um, should you have any other inquiries or questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much. Thank you too, Mr. Mohammed. Uh, we do appreciate the um, details that you were able to share with us on this occasion. It is evident that there already is a level of engagement with business in Sarawak, as well as here in Sri Lanka. Uh, and uh, we have seen now perspectives uh, for a great deal more that could happen between these two countries, yes. So the export facilitation was mentioned. I'll pause here just to mention a couple of email addresses in the event that our participants who are here linked in would like to forward some specific questions which might be answered a little later on by the panelists and those of the speakers who are uh, here with us on the on the webinar this is where you would need to submit your questions your inquiries and hopefully the responses will need to be short and not such lengthy uh, lengthy presentations, but here are the addresses. COO at ICC Sri Lanka, all lowercase letters, and uh, ICC Sri Lanka is one word. So I'll repeat that COO at ICC Sri Lanka.com. That's one of the email addresses. Here's another Secretariat at ICC Sri Lanka.com. Again, all lowercase letters, secretariat at iccsrilanka.com. Now, investment. We spoke about export and perhaps import in the previous presentation by Mr. Mohammed. We now have the director of Maida Sarawak. That's the Malaysian Investment Development Authority Sarawak, which is uh, known by the acronym Maida or MIDA. Investment facilitations and services this is the topic which will be dealt with by the director of MIDA, Mr. Jonah Anak 
Kerani. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Aruns, uh, for your words. And uh, good afternoon to everyone. So we in Malaysia is uh, uh, 2.47 p.m. here. Okay, as mentioned, I'd like to uh, share the uh, presentations today with the members. Can you all see? Yes. Yes, we are able to. Thanks, Jonah. Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, okay. My name is Jonah Nakrani. I'm a director of the uh, Maida Sarawak. Uh, my presentation topics today is uh, uh, regarding investments, uh, opportunity in Sarawak, Malaysia. And, uh, my presentations will be divided into uh, uh, six main uh, uh, sector. The content number one, Malaysia Investments Development Authority overview, that is my organizations, and followed by investment incentives. And next, I'm talking about why you need to choose Malaysia or Malaysia value. I'm going to share a little bit about uh, Sarawak and uh, I'll show some investment performance for last year and then some collaborations with stakeholders in Sarawak. Okay, who are we? Uh, we are the Malaysian Investment Development Authority, known as MAIDA. It's the government's principal uh, investments promotion agency for the development of the manufacturing and services sector in Malaysia. It might be equivalent to both of investment of Sri Lanka in your country. So we are uh, under the Ministry of Investment, Trade and Industry Committee. Currently, our minister, uh, YB Tengku, uh, Dato Sri Utama Zafro Tengku Abdul Aziz. Uh, MAIDA is one of the 13 uh, agency and uh, uh, MITI, and uh, we are the first point of contact for investors who intend to set up project in manufacturing and services sector in Malaysia. Currently, our uh, CEO is uh, Dato Wira Arham Abdul Rahman. Okay, this is uh, where MAIDA throughout the world, we have several officers in several continents. The nearest to Sri Lanka is in Mumbai. So apart from the international uh, offices, we have a 13 office in Malaysia. Okay, what is our rule? Our rule number one, we are uh, promoting investment in both FDI and DDI to Malaysia, and particularly in contact of Sarawak to Sarawak. So what do we do after that? Uh, we are evaluating and providing approval for investments in terms of manufacturing license, investments uh, incentives, and as well as custom duty exemptions. And for foreigners, you are also eligible to apply for expatriate post, either key post or term post. So what is manufacturing license? Manufacturing license is issued to all the manufacturer project uh, with a shareholder fund of 2.5 million or your workers 75. You may apply for uh, exemptions from manufacturing license if your project is below the threshold. Number three, our uh, role is to monitor uh, project implementations in Malaysia. So in uh, MAIDA, we have uh, post invest divisions who is uh, monitor this project, make sure they're taking out from the ground. And number four, uh, our role is to provide business felicitations, like for example, in terms of post invest investment issue 
if it requires talent's needs and uh, local sourcing for parts, modules, and engineering support. This is my strategic partners and stakeholder comprises of international and domestic chambers and industry, bankers, R&D institutions, investment promotion agencies, MNCs, GLCs, business consultants, and tax agents. So you might be familiar with some of these uh, companies or entities. I'd like to share a little bit about uh, on our investments uh, incentives. So our investment incentive, uh, mainly on tax incentive or tax reliefs. First category is uh, uh, under the Promotion of Investment Act 1986. This is for the new investments and it is based on products. You can choose either pioneer status, which is income tax exemptions ranging from 70% or 100% for a period of five years or 10 years. Or you may choose investment tax allowance, 60% or 100% on qualifying capital expenditure incurred within five years. You may choose one, you cannot choose two. Upon completions on that, you can be considered for reimbursement allowance that is were before under Income Tax Act 1967. Uh, this RA is a 6% on qualifying capital expenditure incurred for 15 years consecutive years. We also have Penjana is also equivalent to RA. And High Impact Fund, which is customized package investment incentive, uh, is allocated for domestic investor only. So I'd like to share with you why you need to choose Malaysia. The indicator and some of the figures here indicate that uh, Sarawak, uh, Malaysia has a strong economic fundamental. Uh, in overall, Malaysia economic is stable and expanding gradually. Uh, you can see the figure here in terms of GDP. Uh, there's a growth from 4.2%. Last year, recorded 8.7%. We have uh, controllable inflation in terms of GDP in US. We grow from 2016, uh, amounted to 246 billion and increased to 330 billion uh, last year. And per capita income, there's a record of nine million nine thousand in 2016 and 11,000 recorded last year. So this indicate that we have a strong fundamental in terms of our economy. And uh, of course, uh, we are located strategically in Asia. So Asians, uh, is uh, one of the uh, fastest growing uh, economy uh, in future. So being located in Southeast Asia, we are uh, very fortunate because Asia is projected to contribute about 48% of global GDP in future. Some of the business, uh, some of the business, uh, um, uh business uh, why you choose malaysia is because of the business policy that we have we have a business uh, friendly uh, investment policy number one in terms of equity foreigners are allowed to hold 100 percent equity ownership in the manufacturing and selected services and you have a freedom to repatriate capital interest or dividend profit to your country without uh, any conditions. And uh, foreigners or investors can apply for employment of expatriate, either key post or term post. Malaysia also conform to intellectual property protections law uh, with international standards. And we are members uh, by uh, signings and investment guarantee agreements 
with more than 60 countries. Malaysia also very fortunate and uh, we are member to several FTA and economic blocks. Once that we are member to Asians, which is third largest market in the world with 622 million uh, uh, people. And uh, apart from that, we also have ratified 16 FTA agreements uh, with uh, other nations in the world. We are also partners uh, to RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partners, Asian plus non-Asians, non-Asians comprised of China, South Korea, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. These 15 countries uh, will be the contributors to about 20 to 30% of world GDP. And the third one, we are also a member to Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, CT, CPTPP, uh, who, who, who is in this uh, uh, block, it comprises of Japan, Vietnam, Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Mexico, Malaysia, Peru, and soon will be uh, Brunei and Chile to join us. So these 11 countries, GDP combined will be about 13 trillions and access to about 500 million people. In terms of standing, uh, international standings, Malaysia is ranked and reported, like for example, first uh, in uh, Bloomberg, top country in emerging South Asia for foreign investments in Global Opportunities Index Bloomberg, Bloomberg 2022. And also first for the most potential to attract foreign investor in emerging Southeast Asia by American Institute Global Opportunities Index 2022. This is some of them. Now I'd like to share a little bit about Sarawak. Sarawak is one of the biggest from 13 states in Malaysia with a total land area about 124 uh, square kilometer. As mentioned earlier on, uh, Sarawak is uh, located strategically in Southeast Asia. And what another advantage is that we have abundant supply of raw natural resources like uh, petroleum and gas. In Sarawak, the region is divided into several divisions. There are 12 divisions all in all with capits the biggest. And in terms of demographic, we have 40 sub-ethnic groups with a total population of 2.9 million from 32 million in Malaysia, very small in actual, and with a total workforce about 1.3 million. Uh, in terms of uh, structure, administrative structure, we are headed by our governor, Tuan Yang Terutama Tun Pehin Sri Haji at the time, Mahmud. And uh, in terms of governments, we are headed by Premier, uh, YAB Datu Patingi Dr. Abang Haji Abdul Rahman Tuhari bin Abang Haji Openg. These some are the faces of uh, Sarawak ethnic, major ethnic Iban, Malay, Chinese, Bedayo, and uh, language that spoken in Sarawak, Malay, English, Mandarin, and Iban. As mentioned, Kapis is the biggest uh, state uh, division in Sarawak which is about 38 uh, square kilometer. Some of the uh, economic priority sector or industry in Sarawak, known as 10 priority industry, uh, with, which can be divided into three categories. The first one is a trigger uh, industry comprised of four, steel and ferro alloy, aluminium, oil and gas, petrochemical, glass. And non-trigger comprise of six, palm oil base, aquaculture, timber base, marine engineering and fabrication, tourism, livestock. We also currently embark on a new economy that is a renewable energy, circular economy, carbon capture, storage and trading. These three areas is a new economy that's uh, 
drive Sarawak to the next level of economic in future. In terms of uh, investment, to realize the investment and economic activity in Sarawak, uh, Sarawak has ready infrastructure and some uh, utilities or energy. In uh, Sarawak, there are several uh, industry estates like Samalaju Industry Park, Samajaya Industry Park. In Bintulu, we have Tanyung Kedurong, Kemana, Kuching, we have Demak, Tending, Bako, Sibu, Tanyung Manis, Rantau Panjang, Lanang, Miri, we have Kuala Baram and Lutong. And in terms of power or energy source, we have a total capacity of hydro plants, 3,452 megawatts, uh, <clears throat> considered as renewable energy, uh, which three have been operations, that is Batangai, Bakun, Muru, and Bale Hydro Dam will come into stream by 2027. As mentioned, I would like to highlight to you the two major industrial parks in Sarawak. One is Samajaya Free Industrial Park Zone, which was established in 1991 to create an uh, integrated electronic manufacturing zone, which housed the high-tech companies, which is located 12 kilometers from Kuching Airport and 16 kilometers uh, to Port. So another one is uh, Samalu Industrial Park in Bintulu, uh, which uh, mainly uh, for the heavy industry, energy intensive industry, which covered an area of 1,000 hectare and which was away about 60 kilometers from Bintulu town. So both of that uh, industry located near the sea. I'd like to share uh, investment uh, performance by Malaysia uh, in both primary manufacturing and services. Last year, we record investment about 264 billion, whereby uh, 61 cents comprise of uh, DD, FDI and about 38% from domestic uh, investments. This had created about 4,454 uh, uh, come from 4,454 4, 4, projects, which create about 1,470 jobs opportunity for Malaysians. As said, what you can see, the five major uh, states that ha have uh, investment, highest investment, Sarawak stand number three. These investments are from uh, primary manufacturing and services. Uh, sector. For various economics uh, in Sarawak, there are about uh, the investments amount of 28.2 billion uh, from 166 uh, six projects provide employment about 1,564. So it is uh, about 56 uh, a percent coming from domestic investments. So mainly in primary investments, which is from plantations, oil and gas, mining, and so forth. This figure, this information is about uh, manufacturing uh, investments, uh, recorded 1.6 billion from uh, electronics, basic matter, machinery, non-mineral water, petroleum product, plastic product, and so forth. We also have hotel and tourism projects. This has created 1,300 uh, of job opportunity. From 2017 to 2022 last year, this is uh, the industrial uh, or sectors investments in Sarawak uh, from manufacturing totaling about 33, 35 billion, uh, mainly 75% from foreign, from 86 project. From this, they have created about 13,000 job opportunity. The top three sector are 
basic metal, electrical, electronics, and petroleum products. And five foreign major sources uh, from this investment come from China, Korea, Japan, Netherlands, and Hong Kong, which the total investment from uh, foreign from, from that direction, 26 billion. These are some of the companies that uh, from foreign uh, have uh, invested in Sarawak, Expep, Murata, Longji, Daikan, Tayo Uden, and so forth. We have Shell uh, in, in, in uh, oil and gas. And among domestic investors in Sarawak, we have Pressmeter, KTS, Assembling, Chayamata, Petronas, Romani, Yang, Xingyang, Kirana, and so forth. To smooth the investment to ensure economic activities runs appropriately in Sarawak, we have a state ministry, agencies, GLCs, universities, skill centers, chamber associations, business community, and bankers that we work closely with. With that, I end my presentations. For any communications, you can email to Maida Sarawak, sarawak at maida.gov.my. And in uh, Sri Lanka, it is uh, all under Mumbai. We have Mumbai office. You can uh, email to mumbai at maida.gov.my. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you too, Jonah. We do appreciate what you've been able to share with us. I would refer to that as the nitty gritty for so many details that you presented, uh, incentives, benefits from the tax taxation programs or the incentives that go with the taxation and the repatriation of, uh, of uh, funds and the profits. And uh, also you helped us to appreciate that there are advantages uh, in investing in that region, the equity is as much as 100%. And uh, you also have a talent base that can be drawn on. And uh, also mention was made, very impressive uh, amount of electricity generation that is made available for projects that are foreseen for the future. And of course, uh, industrial parks also with many facilities all set in place. So thank you very much for all of those details that were shared. Now, we have the SBF, that's the Sarawak Business Federation, who are co-organizers of this webinar today. And we have the deputy president thereof, Datuk Dr. Philip Tingding Ng, and he is going to be helping us to appreciate the business opportunities that is provided through and with Sarawak. So here's Datuk Dr. Philip. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Arun, uh, Mandarun uh, I am extremely conscious about the time. It's 3.10 uh, p.m. in Sarawak, which is uh, 10 minutes past the, uh, the conclusion of this webinar, as well as I think it's about 12.40 p.m. in Sri Lanka. So I shall be extremely brief because I know that there's another presentation after me to be followed by a panel discussion. And there's 11 panelists <laughs> lined up for that. So I'm not sure how are we going to manage this whole time. Now, I will, uh, I will speak extremely quickly. My, my presentation will take no more than <laughs> five or 10 minutes. And uh, if there's any uh, things that you people need to know more, and SPR would be very, very happy to uh, respond to, uh, to, to any of, you, of the participants in today's uh, webinar. First of all, about as I'm going to uh, see, talk about four things uh, in my presentation. The first one is about SBF. The second one I want to talk a little bit about is a Sarawak advantage. Many of those points have already been covered by uh, Inchit uh, Zukainain Mushroom from uh, Mintred. I I'm going to talk about the opportunities in Sarawak where Sri Lanka has strength in. And lastly, I have got some words of wisdom and caution to, uh, to for the participants in this uh, webinar from Sri Lanka. Now, I'll be extremely fast. Uh, again, I'm extremely cautious about time. And people like us in the business sector, time is so precious and time is money and we will uh, get straight to the point. About SBF, uh, you can get all information about SBF in the, 
on on the web www.sbf.org.my so i'm not going to say too much about that it is an umbrella body of 20 uh, trade associations and uh, chambers of commerce in sarawak uh, the sbf is only 7 years old but many of our uh, component members days back more than 100 years old okay so uh, you can see everything about uh, sbf on the website as my president said Uh, we probably employ roughly about eighty uh, percent of all the workforce in the state of Sarawak, and we probably contribute in excess of eighty percent of the private sector GDP of Sarawak. So it is a very very big organization, and we be very very happy to host any delegation from Sri Lanka who wants to know more about Sarawak. That's all I'm going to say about SBF. You, you can get it all on on the web. The second one about the Sarawak advantage again, I said it's all been covered by the other speakers, except I just want to just throw in one or two more points. Sarawak personally generates about 5,000 megawatts of uh, power. Uh, that's a lot, and uh, we will be generating 11,000 megawatts uh, in uh, in in a couple of years. We've got a, a big abundance of land. We've got lots of sunlight. We've got lots of unpolluted uh, water resources. Most places in Sarawak has more than uh, 100. Inches of of a rainfall a year. Uh, there is a, a lot of uh, very uh, uh, there's availability of very cheap, uh, relatively cheap, trainable workforce in Sarawak. Uh, as they said, uh, we have got four universities in the state. Uh, two universities are full branch campuses of Australian universities, Swinburne University and Curtin Universities, and they are very very good universities. We have got very good infrastructure in the state, and they're getting better. Uh, we have got a very stable and proactive government. Uh, just for the uh, interest of uh, many of the people who doesn't know Sarawak, Sarawak uh, budget for 2023 uh, is about 11 billion ringgit uh, development budget uh, of roughly about three billion US dollar. That is the state budget of the four. Uh, most developed states in the whole of Peninsular Malaysia combined. <laughs> I talk about Penang, Perak, Selangor, and Johor combined. Uh, the, the, the state development budget of those four states uh, is equivalent to Sarawak's one state's budget. For those of you who do not know about that, we've got very good banking and financial infrastructure, and they're all tied into the international networks. They've got very good uh, legal infrastructure as well. For those who need to know. Now I'm going to cover the opportunities in Sarawak, which Sri Lanka has strength in. Uh, based on my discussions with Shanil, and uh, based on the various uh, uh, videos I've seen in and uh, and and the uh, and the and the websites have been forwarded to me, I think uh, the the following areas we should explore very very quickly: uh, tea, rubber, and cinnamon uh, coconuts, and its downstream activities. Uh, these are the areas where Sri Lanka has got a lot of uh, skills and uh, competitive advantage. There could be other food crops and aquaculture that you people have a lot of, you know, a lot of experiences and advantage that we could learn from. We certainly could learn from your leisure, basically in hotels and hospitality uh, industry. Uh, number four, maybe renewable energy as well. Uh, I understand that some of you have got some expertise in that. And of course, the fifth one is education. Education is very, very big in Sarawak, and it's pretty big in Sri Lanka as well. Again, uh, for greater detail, I would refer you to the presentation by Ichez Zukaina Mason just now, and you can Google the, you can Google it, uh, PCDS 2030. You can Google that. You can find a lot of the uh, information about the key sectors that. Uh, That the private sector as well as the government is going to be focusing on between now and the year 2030. So you can Google that, and those documents are all on the web. And I'm not going to waste time uh, to talk about that. Okay, uh, if you want to ask me questions, you, can, you ask me as a panelist later on. Words of caution. Words of caution about Sarawak. I think that you people need to know. Um, the private sector in Sarawak do not know Sri Lanka. Whatever we know of Sri Lanka are from the mass media, and they're generally negative. Okay, you better you better be be aware of that. <laughs> Secondly, the private sector in Sarawak are very very conservative and cautious. Uh, the too many people in Sarawak, to 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 the people in Sarawak, when he says trade, they normally you know refer to trade with uh, Northern Asia, 
basically Japan, Korea, and uh, China, and India, uh, to some extent, as, as well as ASEAN, and principally, uh, we, are talk, we are talking about Singapore, and Peninsula Malaysia, and to a lesser extent, Indonesia, and to a much, much lesser extent, uh, Europe, Australia, and North America. So, they have, you know, Sri Lanka is a very, very unknown quantity to the people of Sarawak. So you, so you need to trade, trade with great caution. Um, the, uh, with, the, with the exception of uh, many of the big multinationals, local multinationals, who are involved in the oil and gas, timber, palm oil, and its associated businesses, the private sector in Sarawak are fairly basic. The knowledge of international trade uh, yeah, are fairly basic, so you have to trade with great caution. I strongly encourage uh, the ICC uh, and Chanel uh, to organize a trade mission to visit Sarawak, and we in the SBF will be very happy to play a role to introduce you to potential partners. My advice to, to uh, businesses in Sri Lanka we, we wishing to do businesses in Sarau is you must start small to build trust. Start with solid business proposals instead of general proposals. With that, I shall end my presentation and I'll be happy to take any questions you may have later on as a panelist. I'm extremely aware of the time uh, that is left for this webinar and I shall you know, leave it till later on. Thank you very much, Mr. Arun Bandaranaika. Thank you. Okay. Thank you too, Dr. Philip. We really appreciate uh, the points that you've made. And also those notes of caution were very, very useful. And uh, we can see that business people here in Sri Lanka will really need to work hard at winning the confidence of these Sarawakians. Right. So we move very quickly to our next topic. And here's another very interesting, uh, how shall I say, nomenclature that comes in SMM2H. That represents or stands for Sarawak, my second home program, which comes within the topic of the opportunities for construction professionals in Sarawak. And we have uh, Dato Dominic Su, who will be uh, sharing some thoughts on this. He is the chairman of the subcommittee of SHEDA. That's the uh, organization which is working on the project Sarawak, my second home program. So I'll say no more, but invite Dominic to speak. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dominic Su. He does stand for Sarawak Housing Developer Association. So I'm present this, presenting this on behalf of Shida. Just now, I think our, my vice president from SBF mentioned that time is a factor. So I will try to go through this, my presentation very fast. Okay. Okay, first, I am very excited to share with you Sarawak, my home country. It, it's a good place for you to come and invest, to do business, to live, to make friends and to enjoy. We are on Borneo Island and we are Diagonally, we are 3,000 kilometers from Sri Lanka. The size of Sarawak is 124,000 kilometers. Our land size is 120,000 kilometers square. Your country land size is 60,000 kilometers square. So our size is double your size, but our population is small. So we have 3 million people. So we have seven times less people, but double in size. In terms of, uh, we are in a lucky countries. We are we are away from any of the tycoons, earthquake, that sort of things. So, and we are, uh, Malaysia is along a major trade route. We are a major gateway for trading between East and West. Okay. In terms of temperature, our temperature is typical, tropical temperature. Normal temperature is 23 to 33 degrees. Okay, history. We have a very rich history. Okay. Uh, actually in Sarawak, you can find remains of this, uh, 40,000 years ago in Niake, all right? And then the 19th, 8th to 13th century, Chinese ceramics were found in Santubong, right? And in 13th to 14th century, Sarawak was found 
Brunei surrendered Sarawak to James Blue. 1841 to 1942, we are under Blue Dynasty. Okay, so uh, you can see that in 1942, 1945, we are under Japanese occupation. And 1945 to 1963, we are a British crown colony. In 1963, Sarawak, Sabah, Singapore, and Malaya come together and form Federation of Malaysia. Actually, in Kuching, there is a key foundation, and there is a cloud currently still standing Hindu temple, Sri Maha Malaya Amman's temple and Matan. We have 27 ethnic cities and 45 different types of languages. English and uh, Chinese and Malay are widely spoken in throughout Sarawak. If you can speak English, you can go anywhere in Sarawak. Crime rate is very low in Sarawak, so we are a safe country. I think as, as we have gone through by, by my fellow panelists now, we are rich in natural resources. We are top in terms of uh, natural gas and uh, oil export. We actually uh, take out 61% of the natural gas and uh, oil export of Malaysia. And also we are looking at this uh, circular economy and we were thinking uh, uh, are planning to be a powerhouse of Southeast Asia. Uh, uh, my fellow panelists has covered this, uh, uh, our post COVID development strategy two or three years. I'm not going to further into this. Okay, talking about this uh, rich culture. We have this world renowned rainforest musical festivals, and we have various uh, uh, cultural festivals. Actually, in Sarawak, we celebrate four New Year's. We celebrate Western New Year's. We celebrate this uh, Hari Raya Ayyuki Tree, Chinese New Year. And in June, two months' time, we are going to celebrate our Dayak People New Year. We also celebrate the birthdays of Jesus Christ. Prophet Muhammad, and next week we will celebrate the birthday of Buddha. We are rich in uh, biodiversity. We have 47 national parks, 15 natural reserves, and five, five wildlife conservation centers in Sarawak. There are plenty of things you can do in Sarawak, plenty of things to find, uh, adventure, uh, uh, to adventure into. You can uh, beaches, uh, natural beauty, waterfalls, tropical rivers, food. Our food is world famous. Our lasa is internationally famous. Okay. Here you can have Malay cooking, Chinese cooking, Indian cooking, and Thaiyak cooking. And we are creating a new form of cooking called fusion of all these style of cooking. And the list is growing. We have good medical service in Sarawak. We are actually a popular medical tourism destination. International schools, we follow British syllabus. Just now, our panelists have covered, we have a few famous uh, universities here, Australian universities, and you can do it here at a more affordable degrees. Properties, our properties here are much cheaper uh, in, in compared to our neighbor countries, for instance, West Malaysia and also uh, Singapore. Our average property price in Sarawak is currently is around 450,000. Okay, SMH2H, SMN2H program is Sarawak Malaysia, my second home program. This is a program under Sarawak government. Okay, it offer a multiple entry visas for applicants of successful applicants up to 10 years. Who can apply? We are open to citizens all country except Israel. They are open to three different group of ages. 50 years and above, there's no age limit. For 50 years and above, anyone can apply. 40, 40, 49 years old, you can apply, but it will be compulsory to acquire a real estate in Sarawak with a minimum price of 600,000. For, for the age group of 30 to 49 years old, applicant may apply if the child is below 18 years old and receive study in Sarawak, or the applicant is under, undergoing long-term medical treatment in Sarawak. 
these are the basic requirements of the application. You can see that those application forms are quite straightforward. The requirements are relatively relaxed. The, we are talking about a proof of savings of 50,000 for individual, for couple is 100,000. These are the procedures. I will not go into in details here. Okay, perhaps one of the major uh, criterion that I want to highlight is this. For any successful approved applicants, he has to stay in Sarawak for 30 days minimum per year. Okay, this is what I want to highlight. And certainly a medical insurance require, and this is a quite a reasonable price. Okay, these are the terms of condition I will not go through. Okay, these are the countries where uh, we have the most applications and the most of the successful applications. We welcome you to come to Sarawak. You can contact us at SHIDA, Sarawak Housing Development Association. This is our email and our website, okay? Or you can contact me. Thank you. I don't... Thank you very much, uh, Dominic, for a very quick coverage. And nevertheless, it was important to hear what you had to share with regard to the opportunities that do exist. Now, that was the perspective of the Sarawak Housing Real Estate Developers Association, or SEDA, CHEDA. And uh, Dominic also serves as the CEO of Regal International Group, which is very well known in Singapore, I believe. Now, the panel. We have a panel that... Uh, has been assembled and we trust that they're all uh, linked with us uh, we have a few questions that uh, have been thought of and that we will direct to the individuals so we have the chairman of icc sri lanka anthony chanel fernando we have mr dinesh Virakodi, who is the chairman of the port city and also serves with the board of investment and we also have Ms. Uh, vindia virasekara who will be representing uh, Mr. Dinesh Virakodi, the chairman of the Board of Investment. Uh, she is the director of legal and corporate affairs. We have, I believe, Prasanjit Vijay Tilaka, who is the executive director of investment promotion with the BOI. Then the chairman of the Export Development Board, Dr. Kingsley Bernard, is here, as is Roshan Rajatare, the managing director of Haley's Plantation and a former chairman of the Planters Association of Ceylon. And we did hear mention made of the proposition uh, that there is opportunity for uh, plantations or the estate uh, industry to take on, uh, to be developed in Sarawak. Then we have two invitees in uh, His Excellency Air Chief Marshal retired, Mr. Sumangala Dias, who is the High Commissioner for Sri Lanka in Malaysia. And we have also another invitee, and that's the Deputy High Commissioner for Malaysia in Sri Lanka, Mr. Anurin Ignatius. Thank you very much for also sharing this event with us. Then we have Datuk Wan Ali Tonku Yubi, who is the former State Financial Secretary, Sarawak, and Council Member of the Swinburne University of Technology Sarawak campus. And we've already had mention made of the education opportunities that do exist and uh, perhaps for collaboration and working uh, in that area of education. We've just heard from Dato Dominic Su. And we also uh, have Mr. Peter Chai for any comments on the Sarawak delegation that will be visiting Sri Lanka at some point in the future. So. Uh, we would like to start off by directing a question to um, uh, Datuk Wan Ali Twanku UB. And uh, what actual opportunities exist as of now for joint ventures in development projects and uh, with regard to trade? As I was saying, the, the previous speakers have highlighted the various incentives given for joint venture companies and for foreign companies investing in Sarawak. Now, uh, I could see that uh, in view of the massive uh, infrastructure development coming up uh, within the next couple of years in Sarawak, there's opportunity for uh, 
your construction companies who are servicing uh, China companies in, in, in Sri Lanka to open up here with venture partners. But this will be subject to your own uh, commitment and, and uh, connection with the, the parties here. Normally, the government would encourage. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you will encourage uh, local partners to team up with uh, with foreigners, whichever foreigners, not just Sri Lanka, uh, to develop their projects together. Uh, also, incidentally, there are government encouragements for uh, second homes uh, project, as highlighted by uh, Dr. Dominic earlier on. Uh, in his case, he's thinking of bringing people in, but he himself is a developer and the opportunities for development here, especially for people wanting to invest in properties. And we think that there is another area which is uh, going to be helpful for uh, Sri Lankans to look at. And of course, uh, the other opportunities of you intending to bring in your export products yeah, to Sarawak. Uh, this has been discussed with uh, Mr. Chanel during his last two visits. And we believe this will also be an area which uh, Sarawak would welcome because there's hardly any uh, Sri Lankan products here apart from Dilma tea you know, and product meta Ceylon tea, which is setting made in Malaysia, <laughs> except for Dilma, which is original. So those are the areas that can be looked at. And of course, uh, in our previous discussion with SBF uh, meeting with, attended by Mr. Chanel, the chairman, Dato Abang Karim, who is the brother of uh, the chief minister here, has highlighted the fact that there are areas earmarked for coconut plantations and processing. We have no real processing uh, plan in uh, Sarawak for uh, coconuts. And I think the government will welcome that because the uh, government wants uh, downstream as well as upstream investment in uh, uh, coconut plantations. In the case of tea, it was mentioned about uh, by one of the pen, uh, speakers that we would encourage that also in Sarawak because we got some highlands uh, in various parts, including the Fort Division near Miri, uh, even in between the central Sarawak, you know, Kapit and all that area. So those are opportunities that uh, I think uh, the investors from Sri Lanka can look to. Other than that, of course, uh, we have a couple of uh, universities, as mentioned by Dr. Philip, and uh, Swinburne is one of them, of which both of us are council members. We would welcome also students from uh, Sri Lanka. They already, I think before the COVID, it was about 70, 80 of the students are here. But because of the COVID, the numbers have declined a bit, including all the other foreign students as well. But now they're picking up. We have now about 3,000 over students, of which about 15-20% are actually uh, foreign uh, foreign students, international students. Now, our cost of operation in the, uh, the, the, the cost of uh, education in Sarawak is relatively cheap. If you study in uh, Australian University, for instance, even Melbourne, uh, Swinburne, Melbourne, you're going to pay three times more than if you pay in Kuching. Right? Besides that, our cost of living is cheap, and uh, the, the climate for study and for students is safe, uh, is comfortable. Our university is surrounded by two uh, relatively large shopping malls with all the supporting facilities, including malls and uh, you know, uh, commercial uh, operation, as well as uh, what do you call apartments and all that, which uh, can be rented, apart from the fact that the Swinburne itself has got their own hostels for students who are new to this area, they will be given priority. Okay, I welcome any other question that you may want to raise on this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you too very much, uh, Dr. Kuan yeah. Ali. We appreciate very much that you have answered mm -hmm. uh, that question and the construction industry and those affiliated uh, services uh, mm -hmm. really have opportunity is, is what was clearly expressed. So thank you very much. Let mm -hmm. me go back to Dominic. Dominic mentioned a little while ago some details which were useful. Now, I do believe that Sri Lanka government is about 
to sign a government to government agreement for people from Sri Lanka who could be employees over there to <coughs> seek such employment in Malaysia. Now, uh, if that is so and that is shortly sorted out, what really are the opportunities, or should we say, what will be the requirements for the short stay, huh? the visas for short stay? If you can reiterate and make it a little clear, that would be useful. Thank you. Okay. Sarawak uh, ming 2 h the program is specifically for people who need multiple entries. You'll be granted for 10 years, but renewable in five years. So the program is granted for five years plus five years, review under five years. For short-term visa, it's a different type of visa. Um, if, if our federal government will sign a covenant or an understanding or an agreement with uh, Sri Lankan governments on these uh, conditions for Sri Lankan skill levels or skill personnel in terms of construction personnel coming to to Malaysia, they'll be most welcome. But Sarawak control our own immigration. So uh, Sarawak government has to sign up before we can start to do this. But I think there's a need for skilled uh, workers, uh, skilled engineers, skilled personnel for Sarawak construction industry. So Mr. Chanel, if after Akel has signed, if you can come here and talk to our Sarawak governments, I believe SBF can link up for you. That'll be very useful. Uh, I think uh, His Excellency uh, can uh, answer that part of the present situation in the agreement. Uh, yes, in fact, I thought that was a good opportunity to bring in another of our invitees, the uh, High Commissioner for Sri Lanka in Malaysia, uh, Chief Marshal Sromangala Dias. So, is there a reason for the delay, uh, High Commissioner? Can't hear you. Can't hear. Sir, can't hear. Uh, good afternoon for uh, everyone, all the officials. Okay, fine. We can hear you now. Can you hear me now? Yeah, can, can, can hear. Can hear. So, uh, first of all, I thank the ICC Sri Lanka for inviting me for this timely interaction, which is aimed at uh, you know strengthening business ties uh, between uh, as a whole Malaysia and then uh, Sarawak. So. Uh, I will straight go into the, the question that came up right now, or the three. It's about the uh, uh, MOU, that memor of, uh, memorandum of understanding between uh, the Malaysia and Sri Lanka with regard to recruitment uh, or uh, re re uh, uh, recruitment, employment, and repatriation of uh, labor. So this. The MOU was for the first uh, signed for the first time in 2016 uh, for five years and it's, it's, uh, it expired in uh, <clears throat> 2021. So since uh, then, uh, both sides have been working on that, and the present situ uh, the the status of the agreement is it is uh, about to be signed uh, from the Sri Lankan side. Uh, they have uh, the the Ministry of Labor uh, has given his consent to go ahead with the uh, signing and also now it is with the uh, Human Resource Ministry of Malaysia. Uh, actually, right now, the, the discussions or rather correspondence are uh, exchanging to fix a date for signing of this agreement. So, uh, my my assumption is you know, within next one month uh, this agreement will be uh, signed by the ministers of both 
countries, that is the, the Minister of uh, Labour and Foreign Employment of Sri Lanka and all the Human Resource Minister from Malaysia. Thank you. Thank you very much, High Commissioner. Maybe uh, we can just get a perspective on just what you said uh, from uh, Mr. Ignatius, and you're in Ignatius, who's the Deputy High Commissioner for Malaysia in Sri Lanka. Please tell us how things are moving or what might be the, I won't use the word hindrance, but what, what might be the uh, probable date when this will be done. Thank you very much for the invitation. Basically, as briefed by His Excellency, uh, High Commissioner of Sri Lanka in Malaysia, uh, the process is undergoing. So I think uh, once both sides has already agreed to the uh, content of the agreement, I think they are uh, now being on it. Out the agreement and agreed will be uh, arranged with the signing of the uh, memorandum. Thank you. Fine, thank you. So the matter is very much in progress, uh, even though uh, not too much has materialized uh, as of now. Fine, thank you. Now, we did have mention made of estates, plantations, and opportunities uh, with regard to that. We have uh, Roshan Rajadure, who we introduced earlier on. Uh, Roshan, what, what, what would be the likelihood of venturing into that area? Uh, good afternoon all and thank you Arun for that question. <clears throat> In terms of plantations, what I can positively say is that there's uh, ample opportunity and Sri Lanka has enough experience, expertise and a long established tradition of managing plantations. In fact, uh, I might recall that uh, Sri Lankans established the tea industry in Kenya and in some of the East African countries and we uh, as a company, Halis has been now uh, requested to manage some plantations in Bangladesh and help in the restoration of uh, estates in South Africa and start up in Zambia. So there is appetite and there's willingness to manage uh, given the conditions that we are undergoing in Sri Lanka. Uh, it's a bit tough for capital outflow to start up plantations in another area, but certainly anyone interested, we can manage plantations to global standards as we are doing now. Is it, uh, is it that there is still no concrete uh, step that has been taken, Roshan? Uh, no, as I mentioned earlier, we are more than willing to uh, assist in the management of already established plantations and uh, opening up new plantations. Greenfields is an uh, area that we have not explored. But anyone interested in managing plantations, improving quality, productivity, efficiency, a uh, lot of uh, companies in Sri Lanka are up to the task. It's in the affirmative. We can and we will. Okay. And uh, we note what was mentioned earlier on uh, with regard to coconut industry and the processing, processing aspect is yet uh, available for exploitation or development. Uh, so that might be of interest uh, to pursue, yeah. isn't that so? Yes, of course. If the okay. land is of value, we might be interested. Yeah. Can, can I just Good. Uh, can I just have a little comment about here? Uh, yes. Know, about uh, thirty five years ago, yeah. about thirty five to forty years ago, I was involved in a project at the time. Uh, there was a Sri Lankan company. The two individuals, Mike D. Elvis and Michael Waring. I don't know whether those names uh, ring a bell. Or I not. know them they, very well. Yes. Oh, you do know? Okay, uh, Mike yeah. D. Elvis. About thirty five to forty years ago, they were involved with a tea plantation in uh, just outside of Kuching, Sarawak. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I I'm not sure where is Mike the Elvis now, uh, and uh, they they were managing it here. But I'm not sure what really happened to that. Yeah, okay. So there uh, was some. Uh, there was a little bit of uh, you know history to that about 35 to 40 years ago. Thank you. Yeah. Just just to top it off, Mike uh, Mike the Elvis is still uh, alive, but Mike Waring unfortunately has passed on. He was the manager of Pedro Estate in New Orleans. So we, we have experience. In fact, I'm aware of Mr. Malin Bunatilaka, one of the Sri Lankan planters, also a pioneered a plantation in Sarawak, if I'm not wrong. 
Fine. Okay, let's move on. I'm happy to uh, bring in Dr. Kingsley Barnard, who's the chairman of the Export Development Board. Kingsley, if you're there, we would like to hear from you. Uh, I believe there is interest shown by Sri Lanka companies to visit Sarawak. And uh, is it likely that you would be involved on in supporting that initiative? Uh, we can't hear, uh, uh, Mr. Bernard, uh, you need to right. unmute. Right, right. Sorry. Uh, Arun, thank you very much. And also thank you for the organizers, ICC, uh, for facilitating me to join this. Uh, Sri Lanka Export Development Board is the main apex body facilitating Sri Lankan exports. So our mandate is to develop exports. And our role is a facilitating and promoting role of Sri Lankan products and services. Now, with that objective, we have promoted our some of our products which are having a potential uh, in Malaysia. But we strongly feel that uh, there is a uh, the potential has not been fully utilized, and Malaysia has a higher potential than what we are exporting at the moment. And also, if you uh, look at our imports, uh, we are importing a very large uh, quantity of uh, products which are, uh, which are having a value of about uh, four times, five times than uh, what we are exporting. So there is a potential. Uh, therefore, uh, our exporters are looking forward to promote their products. Uh, if you have any uh, international exhibitions or if you have, uh, if you can organize uh, B2B meetings, uh, we can uh, organize our exporters from this end and uh, 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 create a link for them so that they can transact business. So that is basically uh, the mandate of the Export Development Board uh, and also. Uh, we uh, assist our exporters in uh, doing business. Thank you. Thank you too, Kingsley. So we appreciate that you're ready to go in a, in a matter of uh, you know, expression. Uh, you're, you're ready to do it and waiting to do it. Fine. Um, again, with the interest of time being saved, uh, Port City has been mentioned. And of course, this is a slightly different area of activity, business activity and opportunity. So Vindhya, Vindhya Virasekara, uh, we would like to have a word from you uh, with regard to port city as being a financial sector and also being a free port concept uh, and how that might be of interest to business people from Malaysia and maybe Sarawak. Hi, um, thank you very much and thank you ICC. Uh, so the port city is a special economic zone, and uh, it has uh, the commission is empowered to grant uh, exemptions or incentives from about thirteen statutes set out in Schedule Two. Uh, so one of the first categories of, and that is what we know as business of strategic importance. Commission can grant up to forty years of concessions. So we actually for recognized, I told this to Ruan, uh, the downtown duty free has been recognized as the first category of business of strategic importance. Other than that, there are trust sectors in the port city for technology. Um, well, it's a wide variety, in corporate headquarters, regional distribution. Uh, so it, it's actually a, a service oriented special economic zone as opposed to BOI or EDB, which is mainly manufacturing. And uh, Commission functions as a single window investment facilitator where the investor only interacts with the Commission and all regulatory approvals required by the investor is obtained by the Commission. And uh, the employees, the good news is the employees in the Port City Economic Commission, any uh, in any business has to receive their 
salaries in foreign currency. So ideally, it will hopefully it will stop the brain drain from Sri Lanka, and it will encourage other investors to come in as well because salaries are paid in foreign currency, and any income earned in the port city by employees is free from income tax. Anything else you would like to know about the port city? It's actually quite varied. Uh, but we are also in the process of drafting rules as some have been already drafted for ease of doing business. Arun, I hope I have answered your question. You, you have, yes, yes, briefly, but yes, you have answered. And uh, obviously the opportunity is there for investigating matters further. And of course, there's a website in Port City, uh, you know, is, is accessible. That's right. That's right. Finally, we would like to have maybe a comment from Mr. Peter Chai with regard to the Sarawak delegation that might be of, uh, might be interested in visiting Sri Lanka. So, Peter. So, uh, now, as far as my, uh, my side concerned, uh, as a manufacturer uh, in Sarawak concern, uh, most of the Sarawak manufacturer consider small, medium industry side of it. Basically, we have a uh, all type of uh, manufacture in Slawa here. Uh, that depend uh, what type of uh, so-called manufacturing that Sri Lanka are keen or have interest to look into in Slawa. Now, Slawa with uh, about 3 million people, the market actually uh, is small, but of course, as what all of, just how all our panelists mentioned that uh, we have a future lens, actually uh, plantation and other may be more suitable for Sri Lanka, but as far as the uh, export of the Sri Lanka product concern, I think you have a lot of opportunity to export your product to Malaysia uh, because actually Sri Lanka product in Malaysia is still uh, very, very so rare, especially in the uh, F&B or whatever. I think more uh, famous for Sri Lanka product in Malaysia actually is the cinnamon and also the tea. So some of the coconut product uh, yes, you export a lot of uh, coconut product to to uh, Asia Pacific. I'm now in Australia. Actually, I see a lot of your coconut product in Australia. So uh, we actually also have some of the uh, business related to import export. So personally, I would like to uh, uh, bring a dedication to Sri Lanka and talk to your people that uh, on what way that we can help each other to import and export or build out the uh, manufacture activity, make use of a Sarawak uh, a, a unique and a Sarawak uh, so-called uh, specialty, especially in our uh, green energy. Because I think uh, today, uh, I think ESG compliance is very, very important. And we Sarawak have produced a lot of uh, so-called uh, green energy. And we also comply with a uh, carbon trap. And then actually we have been uh, quite uh, popular in, in, in the world nowadays. So I think that, yeah, I think to that more side concern, I think we can link to the business people together. Uh, in a, a very well concern, of course, we're just talking about in principle. I think uh, if as investment or trading concern, it's much easier for trading. Manufacturing concern, you need to look into a lot of other things. Investment, environment, size, economy of scale, you know, and so forth and so forth. I think that we really need to sit down in detail. Uh, yeah, that's how I feel. But I think that the Sri Lanka should be have a lot of our potential in Malaysia, uh, particularly in Sarawak. So if you have any questions, I'm yeah. happy to answer. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, you, you have provided a very good uh, response to the question that we asked for comments. Uh, is there a possibility, Shanil, of responding to any thought that was forthcoming from Peter just now is, would you, and that will conclude our session really. Shanil? Uh, yes, uh, uh, before I just start, I would like to introduce our secretary uh, of the ICC also, who is seated next to me, Pema uh, Kurahanu uh, Gunasekara, who just got in. And basically, uh, I think uh, Mr. Peter Chai was one of the first industrialists I met last June when I came there. And during the holidays, he even came to my hotel to meet with the the secretary of the Sarawak Manufacturers Association. 
and also uh, uh, Mr. Datu Wanali and Mr. Uh, Peter Chai have been very uh, positively encouraging Sri Lankan exports uh, to be brought into Sarawak. So thank you very much. And I think we had a great uh, webinar and uh, maybe we can uh, move into the next stage of uh, exchanging some delegations uh, after Mr. Peter Chai comes. There have been some Sri Lankans who are interested in uh, uh, going in. I'm sure Roshan uh, uh, will take uh, uh, some of their company people as well. And there are some blue chip companies who have made some uh, inquiries about the delegation to go. So uh, from my side, uh, I really thank all of you for coming and spending your time to encourage trade and investment between the two countries. Thanks very much to all of our participants. Uh, we, of course, need to apologize for shooting the mark with regard to the time, but we've you know, kind of gone maybe 20 minutes more than we intended to, but it has been useful. And all of the comments and the preparation that has been done is deeply appreciated. And uh, well, may this be profitable in the future. All the very best to you as we say goodbye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you all round and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.